Welcome to Reselling Basics. Today we're going to shake it up and we're going to talk to you about selling salt and pepper shakers. Some of the real basics, if anybody hasn't thought about doing it before and it's their first time and they're looking at to maybe expand what they do, that sort of thing. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is I've got good dog, my partner downstairs. Hey, guys. Dog, me from Two Dogs Digs. We're here. Uh, and when we thought it, we were starting to think about things that we wanted to learn about. And one of the things that we actually found that was interesting was we had this um, thing that literally just sold this past week. And it was a set of, uh, I did have it listed and now I don't, there it is. So Rick, we, we had actually found this. I'm not even sure where it was, Rick. Where was it? It was in the garage. We were pulling things out. Oh where our Mac sold, and I said, those aren't going in Mac sold. <laughs> it was in, in a pile, in our, in our profit I'm pile. I'm putting those garage. on eBay. I put those on, and I put something else on. The the, the orange... And the orange the bar thing that we bar. talked about yeah. at our other part of the show. But this was actually a set of Japan little four-and-a-half-inch doggies. Rick, you just pulled a I salt pulled pepper shaker. I pulled the out of my butt. And Rick pulled the price of $38.88 out of his butt. And these sold in, what, less than a day? Well, actually, a couple of days. We did have the one lady that got in touch with us like an hour after the report. Yes. These are so cute. Would you take $31 for them? Oh, we, all, we also had that other question. These are so cute. How tall are they? Because Rick didn't That's put right. the size <laughs> I think I have to update a couple of the other drafts. So once we updated it, I thought that the person who was going to pay 31 which we counter back with, to 35 um, but they didn't buy it. Someone else ended up buying it. But it made us think about, you know what? We've actually sold lots of salt and pepper shakers over the years. They we find so them. Cute. Huh? They are so cute. They are, yes. They are very cute. Um, we find them a lot at... Um, garage sales. Uh, we find them at estate sales. They're a big thing in estate sales. Um, and in fact, even today, I was out at uh, Value Village and like a typical um, Value Village, like they even have a section, salt and pepper shakers that you can see in there. And I've got that one. And I think I took another picture of them. Oh, there's another. See, there's two different value villages, just salt and pepper shakers. So we're getting the cha-ching you're hearing is actually some bids on a live auction that we've got happening right now. So um, when we uh, when we're looking at things like that, we thought, you know what? We've actually bought um, a number of items uh, for at, at, at estate sales that are in this salt and pepper shaker area. So I thought I'd just give you some basics on why you might want to think about adding salt and pepper shakers to your mix as a reseller. Number one, if you look on, if you're an eBay seller, then, and you look just alone on eBay and you go into, um, let's just go back in here and we'll go right in here, right off the bat. We'll just go into collectible salt and pepper shakers. As a category itself, it is there. And if you look at this, you actually can see that there's 200,000 listed right now on eBay. 200,000 salt and pepper shakers listed on eBay. In fact, in Terapeak, over the last 365 days, 317,000 have sold and... Over six million dollars in sales of salt and pepper shakers. Would you have thought there's six million dollars in total sales? And in fact, some of those, there's actually some now. Maybe these seventy two hundred dollars are good ones. Maybe they're fake. Maybe it's money laundering. You never know what that sort of thing. But you know what? It's not just eBay. If you go to Etsy, there's ninety one thousand six hundred and ninety eight on Etsy. So between Etsy and eBay alone, there's what? What did I say? 300,000. And if you go to Worth Point, just to get an idea on that, there's one point, 
almost 1.5 million sold under salt and pepper. Now, okay, obviously the some of those aren't salt and pepper shakers, but some of them are. Other ones are in there. I don't know why all those are showing up that way. Let me just do this instead. Salt and pepper. That's a little cheat that if you ever think about only wanting to see something. So 800,000 there that say salt and pepper as the words together on this. So why are you showing us a bunch of rifles? I have no idea. That is so bizarre. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's something that there's you really want to look at. And yeah, there's a whole lot of shaking going on there um, to a lot of these. Uh, so it's actually, but it's actually something that, oh, I think uh, there's even like how their vintage Tupperware salt and pepper sell well. Um, Anne's asking, are most you new or used? It's actually a complete combination of both. What we found is at a lot of the estate sales that we go to, if you find somebody who was a salt and pepper collector, which is usually what ends up being the case, you have the ability to try and find a lot at one point in time. So we went to, like, even when you see them at a, a thrift store, a lot of times there'll be a few, and then all of a sudden there'll be, like, a ton. And that just means the death of a salt and pepper shaker collector or the paring down or moving of a salt and pepper shaker collector. But we've been to a number. And what started us on this one, because you want to tell the story, what started us on the salt and pepper area? Because we hadn't sold those in 20 years of selling. We probably never thought about selling a salt yeah, and pepper. Yeah, this was going back probably four years before the pandemic. And uh, we were at an estate sale, and there were a bunch of, you know, bears and dolls and all sorts of stuff. And sitting on the uh, the the sorry the coffee table and the side tables was an entire collection of salt and pepper shakers every single one of them was marked you know six dollars eight dollars ten dollars twenty dollars and there were some really interesting salt and pepper shakers a lot of novelty things that we had never seen before and because we never really thought about collecting or looked at collecting so Craig, in his uh, desire to load the truck, decided to offer one price for all of the salt and pepper shakers that were there. And I think there were, what, 30 sets? Yeah, about that. And I think you talked them down to 50 bucks for all 30 sets. Yeah, it was the third day of the estate sale. Yeah. And they were, they, so, I think they might have been 50% off, but they were some there priced at like $25 for the pair. Yeah, so... You know, for example, um, this cute little Model T salt and pepper shaker. <laughs> so the driver is the pepper, and his little driving companion is the salt. The wheels do turn. Sorry. It's just a, a sweet little odd novelty salt and pepper shaker. And I think that actually might be one of the few we have left from the 30. We had a few that we didn't list. That might be one of the ones we didn't list. Yeah, there's also this set of hurricane lamps. <laughs> Each one of these is a shaker. Hold it up a little higher, hon, because oh, it's going right where your name is. Yeah, like that. Yeah, thanks. So these come off. And they're kind of sweet. Um, there were some anthropomorphic salt and pepper shakers. I think these are eggs. And they're made in Japan. Uh, they've got a few defects in the glazing, but they're they're kind of cute. Then so, have, Rick, I'm gonna let me pop on for a second. Um, okay. All right. This was another one that we found. This is like corn cob pipe salt and pepper shakers. Now, the thing, again, what we love about these is they're not big. That's the whole thing about the salt and pepper shakers. I know Rick has one that's quite large. You've got the red plastic one there, Rick, that's quite on the larger side of things. But when you look at some of these things and you see them, um, this is just it. I mean, we're talking about things that are tiny now you can also find a lot of these at a at uh not just not just flea markets but at an antique 
malls too. That's one place that we seem to see a lot. There's, I'll show, there's, that is a lot larger plastic salt and pepper shakers with a big kettle thing behind it. Yeah, they're, they're kind of cute. It actually has little screw holes. So you can screw it into the wall. It's kitsch decor. Um, we found a number of these, and I've actually found these more in the past. This is getting beyond our actual um, listing, and this is, uh, I can always, I never remember the name of it. It's Van Tellinger, Van Tellinger. These are, and I thought at one point, and that's the one thing about when you're looking at these, is you got to think, I got to check and see if they're still worth money or they aren't. These little guys are huggers. So this is two ducks, and one is a salt and pepper shaker, and they actually, um, these pair don't go together because they're both the same one. What they should do is they should go like this. They should hug like that. Um, and in this case, um, there's the name of them, a weird little name on the back, Van Tellinger. Uh, these used to be worth a lot of money. I don't see as much money for them going out as now as there is right now. There's also things you'll find a lot of common things. These guys, these seem to be something that is very, very common out there. These sort of these wooden guys. Some of them have some good money behind them. Other ones are those will probably sell or list for around ten dollars US. Yeah, and again, if you're getting them for just in the five dollar mark or things along those lines, like you've got kitschy ones too, like these teak Florida salt and pepper shakers here. Now, in a lot of cases, again, you'll look, always make sure you're checking to see are the stoppers on the bottoms of the salt and pepper shakers, um, have they been used? And if they have been used, you want to make sure that you're cleaning them out, like wash them out. We've actually bought salt and pepper shakers, not only at estate sales, but we've, I ordered some that I, in a bunch that I got as a lot on uh, eBay. And half of them had the salt and pepper still inside them. So when they sent them, the box was filled with pepper everywhere. Because they didn't, even though they wrapped them, it's still it's just like everywhere. There's pepper. Right. I, I said pepper dog. There's pepper everywhere. Um, Rick, you're going to have to grab Doug for a second if you can. I will. Um, and uh, so... Keep those kind of things in mind. But one of the things you can do is take a look. Nelly, actually, it's funny because Lisa says collectors don't care if the stoppers are missing, but you can get ceramic replacements at supply stores. No, it's true. Some collectors don't. I mean, I'm sure there are collectors who do want them, and there are replacement stoppers available. And Nelly says on Amazon, cork plastic, etc. But this is what we have. We have a little baggie, and this little baggie is filled with um, cork stoppers that have actually been from ones that we've had that have been damaged beyond sellability. So they're broken, they're bashed up or anything like that. Yes, that's the worst thing is going to a Valley Village or Savers and going, oh, and then all of a sudden you've got salt coming out. Uh, you would think that, that would happen, but no, some people just don't empty them. Diana's saying that she had that happen too, where people have just sent them. Um, there's a, just a suggestion when we list the kettle list, kettle put range in the title. So there's that's that's the interesting thing. And that's what we wanted to show you is take a look at what these kind of things can go for. Um, again, we did never expected that in like under a day or so, or under a couple of days, we would have ended up selling um, this guy for $40. And we didn't pay that much for it. In fact, we have, oh, there it is. Come on. Are you doing... You're clicking on stuff down... Rick, you're clicking on stuff when I'm trying to click on it, aren't you? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, like, I'm, and in, I'm fact, at the in fact, if you, look at, if you look at what it is, this half of the box that I actually have here behind me is... I'm going to show you this. This box right here... Whoops, some of them are falling over. Ah! I'll be, I'm not going to it, move it much more. But this box was all from someone who was clearing out at a flea market. And I got pretty well every one of these little guys, um, including some really funky ones, some scary clowns, like um, all for about a buck or two a piece. So that's one of the great things about it is 
you look at that and you try and find things that actually aren't costing you a lot of money. So think about that. I saw Lisa actually made a comment. Lisa Bolin actually made a comment that she had bought a batch of them for uh, $300, I think. Um, and like 200 of them for you know, an estate. So 200 pairs for $300. And that's the other thing is they are, they have a tendency to be gotten rid of in bulk and not a lot of money. You can check them up, use Google Eye, like your Google Lens, if you happen to be looking up a pair, but some of the big things, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into the key things that you need to think about when you are actually looking at your basics. So think about salt and pepper shakers. They're small, they're easy to list, and there's $6 million worth of sales on eBay. So it's got to have a market out there. It's something I think a lot of collectors like. So here's what our, we're giving you as our list, as our basics for salt and pepper shakers. Um, and a couple of people have made some comments in the side here that actually we're, we're covering off here, which is why I didn't bring up their comment. But generally look for interesting, weird, or anthropomorphic uh, shakers. Now, by interesting, it could be something like that little car um, or the little lamps. Things that don't just look like, let me just pop Rick over here so you can get a better picture. Oh, no, I got to do this, Rick. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. No, I know, but you can't see when you're that small. So, Anthropomorphic. Yeah, so things like that. Um, I have a little set here that is a lighthouse. The, the lighthouse sits on top of that. And that's the secondary little piece to it. So something that, again, it ha something that has a little bit of interest to it. Um, anthropomorphic is human faces on non-human items. That's the way to remember it. So uh, it's a human looking face on a car, on a uh, fruit, on, it, it's, it's tricky. It can, be considered, it can be considered on cat, on animals as well. Um, weird is just weird. Like we've sold weird looking stuff. Uh, retro MCM vintage kind of looking. Generally, we say avoid souvenir shaker. So normally you try and they just, I mean, we want you to look all of these up when you're thinking about them, but generally it's the sort of thing where you're not going to go for something that is normally a Florida shaker. But in this case, these are very different from what I've seen from most Florida ones, which is why I grabbed them. They're very uh, MCM, uh, mid-century modern in terms of their style. Uh, the idea of the flamingos and the palm tree on them, and even this, the font for the salt and pepper is actually something that is very vintage looking. Um, but generally, if it's a lot of plastic ones, don't think so much about keep those. Just, I mean, take a look, double check, take a look at eBay, eBay solds, and see what they're doing. Keep your buying costs in mind. You don't want to spend $25 on sets that get $35. So we want to try and get as much as you can for as little as you can. And where you can, list as pairs if possible. Avoid trying to sell singles. There is some research you can do for the potential of selling singles. And Lisa Bullen made a comment earlier actually in here about PY, P-Y, um, and the anthropomorphic. Those are ones where you may want to sell a single if you only got the one, but generally, it's a lot more interesting to try and sell the pair. Most people are not trying to find a single. They're trying to find a pair that they think is like. And then uh, as we said, she's tempted to rescue single shakers to sell as replacements, but is afraid that they'll end up with a menagerie pile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you. But then, yeah, but then Andrew's saying set up the menagerie pile as a scene. <laughs> you could do that. Um and uh, clean, so, and as we said, clean out any residue left before selling. Consider multiple platforms that you might be selling these on, not only necessarily local, that might even be a place for you to source. Uh, ask for salt and pepper collections if you've got anything locally to pick up. But think about being on Etsy, being on uh, eBay. Consider that there are, is salt and pepper Facebook groups. Uh, and whether or not there any there's something on Poshmark, I'm not sure, but... The next thing that's big is keep your shipping rates in mind when you're looking at these. And I'm gonna, this is, and prepare with planned boxes. So if you have a bunch of these, one of the things you want to make sure of is you've got enough boxes. And what we've done is, uh, Rick and I know, and I actually have, I bought from face, I saw on Facebook Marketplace somebody selling these little five by six by four boxes, and they were selling them for like a dime a piece. And I bought like 300 of them. 
so that I can sell these and not have to think, where am I going to find a small box for them to fit in? Because 90% of them will fit in there. But the bigger thing to keep in mind there is also shipping rates. And I'm going to throw this to Rick because this is yeah, a big I'm, question I'm, that I'm a lot of people have. I'm shocked at the cost of shipping within Canada now. Within yeah. Canada, it's, yeah. So sh selling these into the States, not such a big deal. If you were selling these and sending them by, most of go first class, Rick? Yeah, they, they do go first class and usually for around no more than the $5.50 mark. We have to charge like six fifty so that we can cover off the chit chats fee, which is our cross, which is our cross border our shipper from border Canada. Shipper. But generally, six fifty will cover you from the east coast sent to the west coast. Exactly, within Canada. I did a quick look at uh, Canada Post to see what it would cost to send the same package to Vancouver and Newfoundland. And here's what I got for a box that is eight by six by four. Uh, I chose expedited because it was the same cost for expedited and regular. So twenty-two to twenty-five dollars Canadian. These are twenty-five dollars before tax, and there's thirteen percent tax in Ontario. So keep that in mind: is okay. when you're looking at stuff like that, and you're trying to sell ten and fifteen and twenty-dollar uh, things that a $20 shipping is going to be probably put a lot of people off. So if you're selling in Canada, our recommendation is that you sell in Canada into the U S and that you sell at using um, <clears throat> a cross border shipper because you can use USPS rates and it will be much cheaper. It will be about 15 plus if you're selling from can sending from Canada into the States and using Canada post. Uh, and if you're selling from the U S into Canada, again, you don't have to use uh, anything else, but uh just send it using pirate ship and use their uh, export rate. And you'll probably end up paying about 15 to $18. But that means that that Canadian really wants that one there. So yeah. keep and those things in mind. Point about using the Canada post small flat rate boxes. What are you doing with that? Oh, you're, you've got the wrong thing on there. That's okay. Sorry. What were you saying? Oh, I said that. Uh, yeah, that's still, it's still eighteen. Yeah, it's still eighteen forty nine there. Um, so yes, sh the shipping there is ridiculous. <laughs> so, and now the only one that's the only cross border shipper that Winnipeg has right now costs a lot of money to use. So that's a challenge for Lisa if she's selling into the states. But if you're selling a forty or fifty dollar item, then it's not so much of a problem if you're selling forty or fifty dollars and you have to charge ten or fifteen dollars of shipping. You might want to consider burying some of the shipping cost in there. So. Those are your tips from us as to what we think or you should look for as the basics for selling them. Uh, hopefully, you'll find your basic to add into what you've been doing and that you'll follow us here on Two Dogs Digs for other reselling basics, some of our other tips, and that you join us here normally on our Tuesday night live hall passes. Uh, we're going to go from this now back into our regular hall pass show because this was featured in our hall pass and talk a little bit about some things that are happening on eBay with promoted listings. <laughs> 